Hi, this is Jonathan Farmer from OPST, and we're going to tie a single stage intruder for you today. Um, it's a little pattern that I've been playing around with and has been really successful for me. Uh, and I hope you enjoy it. For our material list today, we're going to use a barrage of dubbings. Um, we're going to use uh, the Fusion Dub in Eat a Peach. We're going to use some Angora Goat dyed fluorescent fire orange from Fish Hunter. We're going to be using some Ice Dub in UV Pink and more Angora Goat from Fish Hunter in Hot Pink. We're going to be using Ice Dub in UV Purple. Going to be using more Fusion Dub in Electric Grape. Going to be using a Steelhead Orange Lady Amherst from Fish Hunter as well. We're also going to have some Sinyo's Metallic Bard Predator Wrap in Silver, Purple, Black. Some Polar Flash. I can't remember what color this is. It's 2001. Um, and this is from. Uh, hairline, hair on from hairline, and this is some more predator wrap in UV freckled gold. We're going to be using some black barred white OPST signature intruder drab, and also some uh, dotted pink. And last but certainly not least, we're going to use an OPST saddle in red, uh, red dyed grizzly. We're going to be tying this fly on a 20 millimeter uh, intruder shank, and we're going to be using a size three. You can use a size two if you like. Um, OPST swing hook. They come in barbless. Uh, you know, for any guy that's stuck up. A uh, big barb hook in their hand. This is absolutely the way to go. Um, we're going to use some pseudo eyes, and those are in a size small, along with Vivas A dot thread, some 30 pound fire line, and last but not least, a bead. This is going to go in the back of the fly and just kind of make the whole entire thing light up. So let's go ahead and <clears throat> start rigging this fly to get started. We're going to start this one with the hook on. <clears throat> and for you guys at home, I would suggest a little piece of junction tubing. Um, just slip it right over the end of this hook. And it'll really keep you from stabbing yourself a bunch. And what we're going to do, and this is essentially this is the the same way that you would rig um, a bunny strip into a into a trailer on a hook. We're going to make our loop. We're going to come over the top. We're going to twist once to the right, back down and over. Twist one more time. Come up over the top. We're going to pull tight. And what this is going to help do with the fire line, it's going to help hold that hook out. Um, the fire line's a lot stiffer of a braid, um, but I don't want something so stiff uh, like mono or intruder wire because I want this to be able to move some. And we're going to take our bead and we're just going to slip it right on. That's going to help make the back of this fly glow and create a moving target in the back. We're going to start our thread. We're going to run down the shank. And then we're going to tie in we're going to tie in our trailer hook. And I like this to be about an inch, inch and a quarter or so to give that bead a little bit of room to move. 
and so the materials don't get fouled too much in this hook. If they do, that's okay, but in a perfect world, we'd like all of our flies to swim and everything always be free. We're going to run that down, and we're just going to kind of secure this back down, and we'll come back to that in a moment. We're going to tie in our pseudo eyes. These are in a size small. These are the, I think they're the uh, nickel uh, plated chartreuse, I think. They're from Hairline. We're going to go ahead and secure those eyes on some figure eight wraps. And we're going to tighten everything up, just wrap it around the base. Now we're going to come back to tying our fire line in. It saves you a couple of minutes and it saves you some thread wraps um, if you do it this way. And to make sure that since we only have a little bit of that um, tied in, we're going to use some more crazy glue. Now to start building our loop. So first we're going to start off with this eat a peach in the back. We're going to blend that together with that angora. I really like some of these natural materials. I think they're really Really add a add a neat a, a neat um, aspect to the fly instead of just using synthetics all the time. Then we're gonna take a pinch of this pink ice dub. And we're not breaking these in half or anything like that. Um, I'm going to move on to our purple and black predator wrap. We're going to use about I don't know, just over an inch, inch and a quarter or so. We're going to lay that right on there, kind of spread it out. I'm just going to kind of blend all these together. And we're going to take our polar flash and we're just going to kind of stagger the lengths of all these and how we set them into the loop. Let's go right on top, kind of spread it out. We don't want a whole ton of this, just a little bit of, a little bit of flash on the fly. And then a little bit more predator wrap. And I'm just using half of one that I kind of uh, stuck to the side earlier. Just using the last half of it. We're going to give that a little bit of length. That one's going to go about 80-20. We're going to add a little bit of this hot pink angora to the top. Throw a little bit more in there for some color. So we're going to go ahead and spin this up.
take our dubbing wax. OPST dubbing spinner. You can see this one has seen some loops. It's been dropped on the floor more times than I can count. It's kind of separate everything in the loop. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to get good coverage. You want everything to not bunch up and make it all the way around the shank. And we're going to spin that. And start to pick it out. Take our step toothbrush. Brush everything out. Go ahead and part it. Now we're just going to start to twist. And again, there are flies I use, like to use water on. All my all my two stage intruders, I like water uh, to pack everything in. But this fly, I don't want that. I don't want that rear bit of color to be like a dubbing ball like a packed on tight dubbing ball. I just want it to be a bit of color in the fly. And then we can really just start to compress this up front without our water. And leave ourselves enough room for our hackle. Run your thread all the way forward, tying in that loop, and then come back on it. And just give it a little bit more durability. There goes that dubbing spinner on the floor. Man, those things are tough. We're just going to brush this out. Now we're going to add in that Lady Amherst. I'm just going to kind of tie this in like you might on a hobo spay. We go two on this side. on the far side it's going to go on all four corners of the shank Tie that in nice and good. Trim any, trim anything up. Keep it nice and tidy. Now for our hackle around the front. I mean, really, you could almost call this a two-station fly, but it's just a single, single station that has two loops. Take our ostrich and we're going to set that down. A little bit of purple ice dub. 
measure out our ostrich. I kind of like it. I kind of like it a little long on this fly. And then a little bit of this electric grape. top and take just a little bit more kind of building a head and a hackle all at the same time create our dunning loop open it up stick on our ostrich. And trim up the butts. Separate it out. And we're going to spin it. Just take your time picking this out. No need to rush. Brush it all out. Now we're just going to turn this on. Make sure you've got good coverage. Now we're going to do two wings on this fly. We're going to do a pink ostrich wing. And we're looking for about eight fibers or so. And this can be as long or as short as you want them. It's personal preference. It's up to you. Turn our butt. Now we're going to go for our second wing. Take your time selecting these. I want to make sure that you get a couple that you're happy with. All right, we're going to lay the right one on top of the left, even out the tips. 
measure our length. I personally like a little bit of the little bit of the soft tackly base on these flies. Take the one from the top, tie it in on the right. Make sure you're happy with where it sits. If you have enough room, if you're careful with how many thread wraps you give these, I like to fold these stems back. It just adds a little bit more rigidity and durability. Well, I guess durability is really the word. It just adds a little bit more durability to, to those tips so they don't get pulled out. I'm going to give a whip finish. This glue is also going to help lock in those saddles. It'll penetrate that thread. Make for a really nice head. Really nice durable head. So there you have it. That's a no-named little steelhead fly that proven to work really well for me and hope you enjoy it. Dirty little thing, isn't it?